Hello, welcome to ESC TV on the road from AHA 2022. I'm Professor Heid Buchel from Antwerp in Belgium, and I'm joined by Dr. Svenberg from Stockholm, Sweden, and by Dr. Dunker from Hanover, Germany, to discuss progressive AF and enhanced AF. So, David, let's start with enhanced AF. What are the main results of that trial and how do you think these could impact on our clinical practice? Yeah, thank you very much, Hein. Um, I think this trial is very uh, interesting because it investigated a key factor of our work as clinicians. Um, it's the shared decision-making process. And this may sound trivial, but these processes by which we as clinicians talk to our patients and um, uh, educate our patients are not standardized at all and not well studied neither. So um, the Enhanced AF trial um, now investigated a digital tool, particularly tailored for the use by patients with low health literacy. And um, it was provided in different languages, English and Spanish. And it was a multi-center randomized controlled trial. Um, and the primary endpoint was a 16 item conflicts, a decisional conflict scale at one month after the index visit. And the digital tool that the authors developed during this study was based on patient preferences. And it included a four minute animated video, interactive FAQs, a reinforcing quiz, and a worksheet for the clinician visit. And the study enrolled 1,001 participants at five U.S. sites, and it was really a pandemic uh, study uh, enrolling from 2019 to 2022. And the primary endpoint uh, of the decisional conflict scale measured at one month after the initial visit achieved a seven-point difference in median scores between two arms, and um, uh, thereby showed a significant effect of the taken intervention and the digital tool the authors developed. Well, what the authors now showed is that with this novel tool, shared decision-making pathways can significantly be improved. And uh, for clinical practice, we can start using such tools now. Um, and it, uh, the authors also, also provide this on the website, which is afibguide.com. Thank you, David, for providing us with this uh, synopsis of the Enhanced AF. Now we are going to hear about progressive AF, which deals with another important aspect of AF treatment, namely early ablation. Emma, can you tell us what progressive AF was about, what are the results, and why those findings might be important for our clinical practice? Well, indeed, thank you, Hein. And today, Professor Jason Andrade from Canada presented on the results of the progressive AF trial. Now, this trial was also simultaneously published in the New England Journal of Medicine and explored whether early ablation um, could reduce progression of atrial fibrillation episodes from paroxysmal to persistent as compared to antiarrhythmic drug therapy. The participants of this trial were relatively young approximately 58 years on average, um, and actually had quite a low um, burden of other diseases, so not very prone um, to progression of atrial fibrillation. These 303 participants were randomized to ablation therapy or antiarrhythmic drug therapy and also equipped with an implantable loop recorder. Now, this loop recorder was used to monitor for the primary outcome, which was persistent atrial fibrillation episodes. And overall, in the group randomized to ablation therapy, this was met in 1.9% of the individuals as compared to 7.4% in the group that was randomized to antiarrhythmic drug therapy. So actually a 75% reduction of uh, progression to persistent atrial fibrillation episodes in the group randomized to catheter ablation. So I believe this study is another important piece of the puzzle of early intervention in patients with atrial fibrillation. In this case, showing that early ablation actually reduced progression of atrial fibrillation to persistent episodes. Well, thank you so much, Emma. So we have heard about enhanced AF and progressive AF. 
The first trial reminds us on the importance of involving patients in decisions about long-term treatment, like anticoagulation, and it shows that the structured approach to shared decision-making, like the use of that web-based decision tool in the trial, leads to more patients feeling confident about the treatment decision. Progressive AF confirms in a very consistent way that early pulmonary vein isolation leads to more freedom of AF, a higher quality of life, less rehospitalizations, less adverse and serious adverse events during three years after ablation. I must admit, Emma, that I'm a little bit skeptical as to whether that is really due to a lower rate of disease progression, as the author state, but nonetheless, the findings will definitely resonate through daily clinical decision-making. So I thank you both, Dr. Svenberg and uh, Dr. Dunker, for your insights. And we all, of course, look forward to hearing more from AHA in the coming days.